Yeah, hi everyone, welcome to statisticsmentor.com. I'm Phil and in this video we're looking at the properties of leverage points. Recap what a leverage point is. We've got bivariate regression model here and we have main mass of the coordinates here and two which are a bit out. Now this one here is called a good leverage point and this one is a bad leverage point. Leverage points are those points that pull your regression, in this case a regression line, towards it. Now why this is a good one is because it lies about on the line, so even though it was to pull the line towards it, it'll be fine because it's along the kind of, uh, you can see it along the direction of these other masses here. Whereas this one, will pull the line towards it, but now it's going to pull it away from the mass of the x's. So you're going to not get a great line, because it's going to look like this. And that's why I make a differentiation between bad leverage point and good leverage point. In terms of understanding why it pulls the line towards it, we look at the variance of the residuals, which we can show to be like this. And this HII is from the if diagonal on the hat matrix and I've done several couple of videos concerning the hat matrix already and then this here this value here is called the leverage so, so a point of high leverage means it's got kind of pretty much good pa good strength in pulling the line towards it and so this value will tend to be high and so the variance of the residuals tend to be low. In other words, the variability of that point about the line is small, and that's because it's pulled the line towards it. In contrast that to a leverage point, which a low leverage point or no leverage, then it has does not pull the line or pulls as very low strength in pulling lines towards it. But what is low and what is high? Okay, this now we turn to the properties of leverage. So the properties of the leverage point. So the leverage point for point I is the ith element on the diagonal of the hat matrix. Recap, I've written it down. If you're doing econometrics, you'll call that, you won't use H, you use P for projection. The leverage point for point I is between, inclusive of, 0 and 1. If it's 0, at extreme of 0, it means that it has no, it means it has no leverage, whereas if it's 1, yeah, that, that's the other extreme, it pulls a line onto it. Uh, let me, so that you can understand why I write this again, so just picture this with this formula. Look at this again. And think about what happens to the variance of the residual when the leverage takes the value of 0 and the other extreme 1. Then you'll understand what I mean when I'm telling you that the leverage point pulls the line towards it. And then also the result is that the if we add up all the leverage points for all n observations together, it equals to the number of parameters in your model, in the mean part of the model. In other words, the number of in, the intercept 1, so there's always only one of those, plus the number of partial slope parameters. Uh, this result here is useful because then it implies that we can talk about average leverage values with ex average leverage for each point, since their average leverage is the sum of the leverages over the number of points. But we've just said this is P, so in other words we get P over N. And then what constitute high leverage? This is when then they talk about it in terms of how far you are from the average leverage. So here the practitioners talk about two times the average leverage. If anything is bigger than two times the average leverage, you can constitute high leverage point or two. some people use 2.5, some people use... Three. What we can see is that the, av the, the average leverage here, quite interestingly, does not depend on the actual values of your x's. Remember, x is a uh, h is a function of x's. It only depends on the number of parameters you have and the number of observations, but not on the actual values of the x's. Okay, so based on the other videos I've done about 
concerning the linear algebra properties of H, I'm now going to prove these two things. First, the easiest one, prove that the sum of the leverage points is equal to the number of parameters in the mean part of the model. For this, I'm going to use linear algebra. I'm going to use the hat matrix. And we use the trace operator. Now, the trace operator, by definition, is the sum of the diagonals of whatever it is you're looking at. So I'm looking at the sum of diagonals of the matrix H, which is what this is. This is just another way of writing it. And then I use some properties about this trace operator. Okay, substitute for H, trace of Now using the results of the trace operator, let's just do a recap here. Trace, I think of a sushi bar here, or one of those, you know, rotating, um, whatever. This is same as the trace of, if we look at clockwise like this, move it around, CAB, which is equal to the trace of, move that round, BCA, and so on. So here I'm going to say that this is equal to the trace of, take this over there, x transpose x. Let's look at the dimensions of these things. x is n by p, so this is p by n, n by p. Again, p by n, n by p. So if we multiply these two together, we'll end up with something which is p by p. More, more than that, use, we can see that this is the inverse, these inverse of each other. So what we're going to get is, it's going to be identity matrix with dimension of p. So what we have is the trace of an identity matrix of order p. So there's only diagonals of ones along an identity matrix. How many ones are there? There are p of them. Finished. Now finally, I'm going to show that, that each leverage point takes a value between zero and one. So there's two parts here. I'll do that. I'll do. I'll show first that it's bigger than or equal to zero. And um, this is quite quick actually because we can say that H is a positive semi-definite matrix, which I proved in another video. And by property of positive semi-definite matrix positive semi-definite matrices have non-negative diagonal elements. This is the argument. Therefore, it must be that HII is bigger than or equal to zero. Finished. Okay, but um, why don't we kind of elaborate on that? This bit I've already proved in a previous video, so why don't we just, for you know, revision of linear algebra, prove this. Positive semi-definite matrices have non-negative diagonal elements. Okay, first let's define a vector, say EI, which is a vector of zero, column vector of zeros, with the i element taking one. So say that, say, if it's, so say i element, okay, say dot, 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 zero, dot, 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 like that. So it's a vector of it's n by one vector of zeros with uh, one on the i element. Then look at this. This is a quadratic form. Okay, quadratic form using the matrix H. And what does this quadratic form do? It picks out. Can you see the i diagonal? Uh, element of this H. In other words, I have H I I. And then I can say that this H I I is bigger than or equal to zero because in the previous video I've shown that H is a positive semi-definite matrix. To be positive semi-definite matrix, this is the definition that this quadratic form is bigger than or equal to zero. But since it's actually equal to H I I, it's the same as saying H I I is bigger than or equal to zero. End of proof. Now, second part of the proof is we show that 
HI less than or equal to 1. Now we've known, continuing on from that proof there, now we know that HII is equal to this but we've seen from the previous video I showed you that a related matrix to this is let me just write it over here um, M matrix M related projection matrix I minus H which projects Y onto the space orthogonal to that spanned by H Okay, so I've simply rearranged this for H into here multiply through I think you can see the result already that is 1 this thing is a quadratic form again isn't it? it's quadratic form but M here is also positive semi-definite which you can easily prove H is positive semi-definite I minus H is also positive semi-definite bigger than or equal to 0 hence what a number minus something which is bigger than or equal to 0 must be less than or equal to 1 fantastic and we're shown there the key properties of leverage points